Um, this is the middle one. And so what you're seeing right here is the copper dam. That's not the final dam. That just diverts the water. The actual dam, like, it goes back there. It gets big. So we get down. This place, um, the national government quite a while ago and said, all right, guys, uh, quick construction. You don't have your environmental permits in. You, you need to do your assessment and all that stuff. Totally halt everything. And you're like, OK, halt a little bit and then start building it. Um, and once you divert the water, that's they were already legal. That's like another big step down the path to, uh, of the legality. Um, and so this is the first time Travis has been going down the stretch. He runs trips down the Great Bend. This is the first time he'd seen them diverting water. So it was, it was a big deal. Um, so we're, we're taking some pictures. All the construction on the other side, so we don't really worry about them bothering us. There's Brian who was his opinion of the dam. He flowed down, this says no boat floating or it said something funny, it's like no raft. <clears throat> um, so it was pretty crazy. Back here's the copper dam, like over here. Um, on the left this is massive quarry, huge quarry. There's taken all this rock out of the side of the river. And there are these guys behind this big piece of machinery, half size of this room. And we're floating down there, hucking rocks at us. So, <laughs> yell over, real angry. And uh, I was just being rude. And I like paddle up before I know they can't hit me, but like to taunt them. Um, and we just just being cool. And Travis is just kind of doing his thing, and then his ears perk up. He's like, "Dynamite, guys, we gotta go!" And so he's like paddling, paddling, paddling down this thing, and he's like, "Yeah, they." They're saying they're about to blow up. They're like, what are you stupid? Get out of here. We're about to blow this place up. <laughs> so we paddle on down. And I was like, guys, let's catch an eddy on the right. I want to see this thing. But it was all kind of in the midst of it. And we didn't really, we were just in the river and we kept floating. Went around the corner and all of a sudden, the largest boom and like body reverberation I've ever felt in my life. Like the river was you can hear it echoing around the gorge in the canyon for like a minute. It just kept going and traveling. It was crazy. I, I look back and I see boulders, probably the size of like half the screen, flying across the river, like landing over here. It was crazy. <laughs> it was like a meteor. I was so glad I went around the, uh, the bend and not catch that egg. Uh, so there's a lot of gold mining operations. This is a BNC river hazard. That actually, is, for some reason, it's very frightening to float past a wire like that. I don't know why. More frightening than Pally Castle City. Um, another gold mining thing. Uh, I don't want to picture that thing. Uh, and so we got a little great bend segment. This is a little video. It kind of explains the last descent. Um, it's about a minute and a half long. Um, I don't know if Travis does a little bit. After falling in love with China's rivers, Travis found out that they would all soon be damned. The goal now is to take as many people down these rivers to see them before their beauty is drowned out forever. So we hit the Great Bend of the Yangtze for a trip that will last a lifetime in our memories. Spectacular views and no one around, except for the odd gold miner. You heard right, gold miner. They're still around. They kept heading west, and they went so far west, they ended up in the east. With the loss of respect for the government's strict environmental standards that are not strictly implemented, gold mining operations run amok. The Yangtze is a little particles of gold shimmering in the sun. Holds unimaginable natural wealth to either be exploited for the greed of the company to be shared by all. 
This portion of the Yangtze, the Grand Canyon of China, will be underwater within the year, taking with it remote Nanchi villages that have withstood time for a thousand years unchanged. Some of them even already deserted as their inhabitants are forced out by dam officials. A dam site we floated through, just as so many of these sites, does not have its environmental permits. But the environmental proposals would seem to be too scary for officials to even allow these proposed dams. But they continue to work in their goal to stair step the Yangtze from source to sea with tens of thousands of dams. 99% of China has electricity and needs no more except the booming industry threatening the environment. It's a toss-up between clean hydropower and the loss of the natural beauty and rich cultures found only here that still have yet to be appreciated by the rest of the world. Because of the secrecy of these sites, we had to hide our cameras. These fellows here make their living smuggling goods and people through the construction zones. All while wearing shirts saying, free room to your character. Um, so, yeah, the last dam is going to flood the last half of the canyon. Um, but the really cool stuff from our isolated section is the first half. And uh, that's why Travis's, let's see what I got here, that's why Travis is um, fighting the way he's fighting. He's, he's been living over the last seven years. And um, he takes Beijing um, big wiggers, big heavy uh, political and, um, and uh, financial heavyweights, takes them down the Great Bend and basically just letting the river speak to them and uh, try and change their hearts. It actually made a lot of headway. Um, it's, um, it's a big punch by doing uh, not much for just one guy, so it's pretty cool. But it's a really large fight and um, it's hard to do on your own. But He's pretty much dedicating his life to trying to save the rivers over there. It's pretty cool. So the first half, going to Eagle Dam, it could be saved. Um, Bell hasn't run yet. This is China's gross domestic product, and it is really related to what I'm talking about. So we're going we're to look at it here. Um, they are in the middle of an industrial revolution. <laughs> they are crazy. Um, has anyone compared China's to Canada's? Is anybody? Um, so, we're going to get that here. <laughs> um, it's okay, I mean, you can't compete. In Industrial Revolution, it's, it's a boom in so many ways. Um, the middle class is exploding. You have money in your pockets now. It's, it's, it's economic, it's everything. It's pretty cool. Um, and this is what it looks like for the most part. It's it's really cutting edge in one way. They're every day they're advancing down the path towards uh, you know more civilized quote um, living. But also at the same time, it's, it's it's really adolescent stage too. There's so many growing pains involved. Um, so many lessons being learned, trial and error, and not even learning lessons, relearning lessons ten times in a row. But we were in that place too, and a lot of people are harsh on China. Um, and I think they kind of forget where we come from. We did not get here just by being North Americans, right? We went through the Industrial Revolution too. We learned those lessons. We were also killing our workforce, having accidents. Um, it was an easy process for us. This is, um, at least in New York, this is the Triangle uh, Shirtwaist Factory Fire. 146, actually, it's most current here. But uh, they were locked in the factory. They don't die when the fire happened. Uh, we share a lot of common strands with China. They're, they're doing the same thing right now. Um, it seems more like instead of a big brother mentoring, being like, listen, we had the same thing happen. Let us help you. It's more like, what are you doing? <laughs> Stupid. Quit killing your workforce. It's like, well, yeah, we, we just need to remember where we came from. This is our industrial revolution. Hardly any wages, child labor. This is theirs. This is their, their current state of affairs. This is us. We put our private world to work. They do too. Um, we're in the same boat. This is uh, theirs. This is us. This is China. 
We share a lot more common strands than we think. Um, this is about us. The Industrial Revolution has changed the nation greatly. It has developed minds and men to develop great inventions and to benefit the working class. Um, and so the, the reason I say all this is why were we deprived China of that? Why, how can we stand here on the foundation we've built for ourselves and say, no, you're doing it wrong, you can't have this. It takes what they're going through right now, you know. No one can really throw stones out there. Um, so China's going through boom. This is their carbon dioxide emissions it's skyrocketing. And it has to do with this. It's because they're large dependence on coal. Uh, it's estimated about two thirds. You can see it's a little projection out here. It's, it's an estimate that two thirds of China's energy comes from coal. Uh, it's cheap. Coal is everywhere. Oil, it's kind of like a gift. You, Saudi Arabia's got it. You know, Norway's got some. It's not spread everywhere uh, evenly. Coal is. It's pretty much everywhere. If you want to mine coal, you can. Uh, but when you burn it, it's it's really inefficient. You got to burn a lot to get a little bit of energy. This is also just another thing showing China's like, um, increased dependence on coal compared to everywhere else. Like India uses it a little bit more. Everywhere else kind of stays the same. Um, this is pretty gnarly stuff. <clears throat> so hydropower. This is what I've been talking about with the dams. It's a good option. Um, Great. It takes a lot of carbon dioxide emissions to build this thing. This is the Three Gorges. I'll uh, cover the Three Gorges for a little bit because everyone's kind of heard about it. Um, but once you're there, it's a really good use for a resource of a river. Um, I'll talk about the negative impacts in a second. But So this is one of the Three Gorges um, turbines. It's super power powerful. Um, at max capacity, the Three Gorges Dam, one river, the Yangtze, can produce electricity comparable to 200 large coal power plants. That's pretty cool. That's 200 of that. Like, I'd like to take that out of the air. Um, so this is the dam. You see a block on the bottom. It, it uh, flooded 400 kilometers of the Yangtze Valley. Um, all farmland. A lot of towns and stuff. This was uh, a big reason they were pushing, obviously, the energy. It was projected that the Three Gorges would produce 10% of China's energy needs. It's now six because they've grown a lot more than they thought they were going to grow. Um, so this is just another one of the arguments to help mitigate flooding. Uh, you will not see this guy opposing Three Gorges Dam. He's just happy to be able to look on his door. Uh, he's still. And so in 2008, they had, they said like a 40-year flood or whatnot, and the media was all over, like, all right, this is the test. They've been saying this is why they built it. And it passed. The Three Gorges, the reservoir absorbed all that water and was able to discharge it. Um, they succeeded. They've also got this lock system that has increased shipping from 3 tons to 80 tons. Sorry. Uh, 3 million tons to 80 million tons on the Yangtze. And the Yangtze accounts for 80% of China's inland waterway shipping. So that's a pretty uh, big plus for the economy. This is then packing some stuff into the locks. <clears throat> uh, and so then we got to talk about the other stuff. This city no longer exists. It is underwater. It's like that. It is gone. Uh, there's the high water mark of this city. 1.3 million people were displaced by the Three Gorges. And that's just the immediate impact. There's been estimates that now another 400,000 have been have to be uh, uh, relocated as well. Uh, and then 1,300, uh, this one's just, that's, that's the high water mark, so it's just kind of a hype up picture. But 1,300 um, historic sites, artifacts, all that stuff uh, are now under the lake. Some pretty cool stuff. It's pretty cool history is forever gone. And um, that's 